Sam Waters was following Brian Wilson and the Phantom Killer into the warehouse, the explosion was deafening and within seconds the whole building was engulfed in flames. Brian smiled as he fell through a trapdoor, safely sliding to safety down into an underground bunker he had spent months on end building. He knew it would withstand the blast. As he fell into the bunker, he quickly rolled out of the way as Fred Jackson came rolling out next. Fred was dazed while Brian had his eyes fixed to a chute in front of him where Sam Wilson dropped out of the chute within seconds. Brian laughed and said, hey, rough landing, but hey, it's better than being blown to smithereens by explosives, hey Sammy boy. Sam was shaking in fear, but a part of him was relieved he wasn't killed in the explosion. Brian held the gun to them and said, OK, here is the part where you strip your clothes and shoes off completely. I need to make sure there's no tracking devices. It just struck Brian that everything he was saying would be heard if they were wearing a listening device. He kicked himself for that flaw in his otherwise ingenious plan. Both Sam and Fred stripped completely and Brian walked over and handcuffed them both and tied their legs to a bar so they couldn't escape as he checked their clothes for any devices. He smiled when he discovered there were none. After a thorough search, he threw the clothes back to them and uncuffed them and told them they could get dressed. Up on the ground outside the burning building, the sheriff said to one of his officers, Do you know what's funny about this whole thing? The officer replied, What sir? I am looking at that tracking device, put in the shoe, and that thing is in one place, not moving, but just in one place. But if that was in that fire, wouldn't the signal be lost? The sheriff looked at the officer. Are you following me, boy? He replied. Yes, sir. Do you think somehow they're still alive? The sheriff said. Let's hope so. It was like an oven with the heat in the bunker and the burning flames above them. But yet they were free from danger. Brian smiled at both men and said. Well, do ye not give me credit for my ingenious plan? By the way, I suppose, Sam, you're wondering where your wife and kids are. Would you believe they're just across in the other room? But, not to raise your hopes, they will not be able to survive much longer, as no one is going to know they're down here. I have enjoyed our friendship, Sammy boy. I must say, I kind of enjoyed the cat and mouse chase we were playing all over the years. But I'm afraid, my friend, there comes a time all good things come to an end. And this, my friend, is the end for you. Brian looked over at Fred and said, And you, Freddy boy, you might wonder why you got involved in all this. Well, you see, you joined yourself, really, by accepting my interview. I was going to do a live podcast and then have you killed. But I said, this will be better. Everyone is going to think that I am gone. Killed, gone from this godforsaken world. But you see, the truth is, I will be walking out that tunnel I took a month's building, and I will be a free man, thankfully. I won't have to keep watching over my back all the time and being like a bloody special effects makeup artist. Sam shouted, Let my wife and kids go, you sick bastard! Brian pointed his gun at Sam's head and said, No, you see, that wouldn't end well for me, would it? Sam knew his end was coming, and suddenly there was a gunshot. Sam fell to the ground. Fred screamed, looking at Sam fall hard on the ground. He then saw Brian fall to the ground. Sam's eyes opened. He realized somehow he was alive and his vision cleared. As he looked up, he could see the sheriff above him. The sheriff said, Are you alright, son? Are ye guys okay? Sam smiled and said, 
I had seen better days. Then he lifted his finger and pointed towards the direction Brian told them he had his wife and kids held captive. The sheriff looked over at Fred. Well son, you sure will have a lot to talk about on your next podcast. Fred smiled and said, What made you guys guess we weren't killed in that explosion? The sheriff pointed to Fred's shoe and said, The answer is in your shoe. Fred thought, of course, the tracking device, and thanked God Brian didn't check his shoe better. A few days later, Sam Waters, his wife and kids, were guests on Fred's podcast show, and the listenership ratings went through the roof, giving Fred's true crime podcast the highest rating ever for his show.